Before we continue on in chapter eight, we need to take a little bit of time and review simplifying radicals, which is an algebra skill. Okay. Now, perfect squares. Okay. The most common perfect squares are one, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, and 144. These are perfect squares because we can take the square root of each of these numbers and get a whole number in return. For example, the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 49 is 7. Okay. Well, we're going to have to simplify radicals so that we can get exact answers. Okay. So for example, in problem number 1, we have the square root of 12. Well, if you take the square root of 12 on your calculator, you're going to get a decimal that does not end and does not repeat. Okay, So if we were to give an, give an answer, we would have to round that answer to the nearest tenths or hundredths. Whenever we round a number, okay, or decimal, it's an approximate answer, which means it's really close to the right answer, but not exact. Okay? If we want to give an exact answer, then we always leave it in what we call simplest radical form. And most of the answers in 8.3, we're going to ask you to give your answer in simplest radical form. So we're going to take a little bit of time and simpl uh, review simplifying radicals. Okay, in problem number one, we have the square root of 12. Okay, to simplify the, the radical, I want to find the largest perfect square that divides into 12. So I'm looking at my perfect squares and deciding what's the largest number that actually divides into 12. And the answer to that is 4. So I'm going to rewrite the square root of 12 as the product of two radicals. Okay, so this is going to be equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Now, 4 times 3 is 12, and radical 4 times radical 3 is radical 12. I'm going to simplify this. I can take the square root of 4. It is 2. But I cannot take the square root of 3, and there's not a perfect square that divides into 3. So I'm going to keep the radical 3, and I have 2 radical 3. This is simplest radical form for the square root of 12. Okay, in problem number 2, I have the square root of 300. Okay, to simplify the radical, I'm looking for the largest perfect square that divides into 300 and that would be 100, okay? So I'm going to rewrite 300 as the square root of 100 times the square root of three. 100 times three is 300, so radical 100 times radical three is radical 300, okay? Now I'm going to continue simplifying. The square root of 100 is 10, so I can rewrite this as 10 radical three. Okay, in problem number three, I have the square root of 48. So I'm looking for the largest perfect square that divides into 48. Okay, that number is 16. So the square root of 48 is the square root of 16, and 16 times three is 48. So radical 16 times radical three, okay? Square root of 16 is four, so in simplest radical form, square root of 48 is 4 radical 3. Now, there's another perfect square that divides into 48, but it's not the largest. So what happens if you choose a perfect square, but it's not the largest one? Okay, so for example, 4 divides into 48, and 4 is a perfect square. So I could rewrite radical 48 as the square root of 4, um, and 4 times 12 is 48, times the square root of 12, okay? So what I have is 2 radical 12. Now we have to be careful. We have to make sure that the square root is in simplest form. But I know 4 divides into 12 as well. So I have to continue simplifying. So I have my 2. I'm going to rewrite the square root of 12 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. 
Now, all of these values are being multiplied together. So I'm multiplying 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So I can take the square root of 4, which again is 2. So now what I have is 2 times 2 times the square root of 3. Numbers outside of the radical can be combined together. So 2 times 2 is 4, and this is 4 radical 3. Now I would like for you to pause the video and try number 4 and 5. When you're finished, hit play, and I will go through these with you. Okay, so problem number four, I have the square root of 50. The largest perfect square that divides into 50 is 25. So I'm gonna rewrite the square root of 50 as the square root of 25 times the square root of two. Square root of 25 is five, so this is five root two. In number five, the largest perfect square that divides into 27 is nine. So I'm gonna rewrite this as the square root of nine times the square root of three. Nine times three is 27. Square root of nine is three. Remember, when you take the square root, the square root symbol goes away, but I cannot simplify square root three, so I'm gonna keep that and simplify. The square root of 27 is three radical three. Now, in addition to simplifying radicals, we're going to have to do something called rationalizing the denominator. Okay. Within a fraction, you can never have a, a radical or a square root left in the denominator. So we go through a process called rationalizing so that my final answer has no square roots at the bottom of the fraction. Okay. In problem number one, we have one divided by square root three. To rationalize, I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by my radical, which in this problem is radical 3. Now, we multiply fractions by multiplying straight across. So 1 times square root of 3 is 1 square root 3, or just radical 3. Now, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. So numbers that are inside of radicals can be multiplied together. Now I can take the square root of 9, which is 3. So this is equal to the square root of 3 divided by 3. Okay, and problem number 2. I have 12 divided by square root 2. Okay, I cannot have a square root in the denominator. I cannot divide 12 by 2 because 2 is inside of a square root and 12 is not. I can only divide numbers if they are both inside of a square root or both of them are not. So to rationalize, I multiply the numerator and the denominator by radical 2. 12 times radical 2 is 12 radical 2. We just smush those together. Now square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. Now, I can simplify, and square root of 4 is equal to 2. So this is 12 radical 2 divided by 2. Now, notice I have a number on the top and a number on the bottom that is not inside of a radical. So I can simplify that. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So my final answer is 6 radical 2. Okay, okay problem number 3. 10 divided by radical 3. I cannot have a square root in my denominator, so I'm going to rationalize. Multiply the numerator and the denominator by radical 3. We multiply straight across. 10 times radical 3 is 10 radical 3. Now, radical 3 times radical 3 is the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So notice when you multiply two radicals, and the same number is underneath, your final answer is going to be that number underneath. Now, I have a 10 and a 3 outside of the radical, but I cannot divide 10 by 3 to get a nice number. I cannot reduce the fraction, so my final simplified radical is 10 radical 3 divided by 3. I'd like for you to pause the video and try numbers 4, 5, and 6. When you finish, hit play, 
and check your answers. Okay, problem number four. To rationalize, I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator by radical three, and I multiply straight across. 15 times radical three is 15 radical three. Radical three times radical three is radical nine. And the square root of nine is three. So I can rewrite this as 15 radical three divided by three. Now I can divide the two numbers outside of the radical. 15 divided by three is five. So my final answer is five radical three. Number five, I have seven divided by radical two. I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by radical two, and we multiply straight across. Seven times radical two is seven radical two. Radical two times radical two is radical four. Okay, and I can simplify the square root of four. Square root of four is two. So this is seven radical two divided by two. I cannot divide seven by two and get a, an answer that's not a decimal. So I'm gonna keep it as a fraction. It's already a reduced fraction. So my answer is seven radical two divided by two. Okay, problem number six. I have 10 divided by radical five. I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator by radical five. And I multiply straight across. 10 times radical five is 10 radical five. Radical five times radical five is square root of 25. And square root of 25 is five. I can divide 10 by five, and my final answer is two radical five. Okay, this is called rationalizing the denominator. Okay, the last type of review problem I wanna look at is solving a proportion. To solve a proportion, we cross multiply. So in problem number one, I'm gonna multiply four by n, and I'm gonna multiply seven by the quantity n plus two. Anytime I have a quantity, I'm gonna put that quantity in parentheses, okay? So I have four times n is four n. Put an equal sign, and seven times the quantity n plus two is seven. And in parentheses, I have n plus 2. And I'm going to solve the equation. I distribute the 7 first. 7 times n is 7n. 7 times 2 is a positive 14. I can subtract 7n from both sides. 4n minus 7n is negative 3n. And that's equal to 14. I divide both sides by negative 3. And we're going to keep our answer as a fraction. I can't reduce it. So my final answer is negative 14 thirds. Okay. Problem number two, I have a proportion. I notice I have two quantities, x minus 9. I'm going to put parentheses around. And I'm sorry, this should be an x plus 5. Okay. To solve the proportion, I cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply 8 times the quantity x minus 9. And set that equal to the other product, 5 times the quantity x plus 5. Okay. I need to distribute 8 on the left side of the equation and 5 on the right side of the equation. So beginning with the eight, eight times x is eight x. Eight times negative nine is negative 72. Five times x is five x. And five times five is a positive 25. Okay, to solve for x, I'm gonna isolate the variable. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose to subtract five x from both sides. So eight x minus five x is three x. I could add 72 to both sides. I have 3x is equal to 97. Okay. Divide both sides by 3. And again, 97 divided by 3 does not result in a whole number. 
Okay, we're gonna get a decimal of some kind. So I'm gonna keep my answer as a fraction, as an exact answer. It cannot be simplified. So X is equal to 97 thirds. Okay. I would like for you to pause the video and try numbers three and four. When you finish, hit play. Okay, for number three, we're going to cross multiply. So I'm gonna put parentheses around N minus four and N plus four. Okay, cross multiply. I have eight times the quantity N plus four. and two times the quantity n minus four. And I'm going to distribute the eight. Eight times n is eight n. Eight times four is 32. On the right side, two times n is two n. Two times negative four is negative eight. Okay. Subtract two n from both sides. So I have six n plus 32 is equal to negative eight. Okay, last I subtract 32 from both sides. So 6n is equal, negative eight minus 32 is negative 40. And I divide both sides by six. Again, I wanna get an exact answer, no decimals. So I need to reduce my fraction, and I know that two divides into both 40 and six. So negative 40 divided by two is negative 20. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So my final answer is negative 20 thirds. Okay, and problem number 4, I'm going to cross multiply. Okay, I have x times 6x is 6x squared. And 50 times 12 is 600. I need to solve this equation for x. I'm going to isolate the variable first by dividing both sides by 6. So I have x squared is equal to 100. Now to get x squared, simplify down to x, I take the inverse of squaring, which is the square root. The square root of x squared is x. And the square root of 100, I have two answers because the squared is plus or minus 10. So I actually have two answers. My first answer is positive 10. My second answer is negative 10. Okay, now I would like for you to go to your chapter eight notes and turn to page six. There's an algebra review that practice a little bit with simplifying radicals, rationalizing, and proportions. Good luck.